Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So there are so many mid-size crossover SUVs that are currently available in the market that it gets really confusing as to which one to go for. Hopefully after watching today's video I'll be able to unclear some confusion so that it becomes easier to narrow down on the choices of mid-size crossover SUVs to go for. So in today's video I am going to be reviewing the Toyota Highlander Hybrid VXR. Before we move forward, please consider subscribing to my channel and also make sure to press the bell icon so that you never miss any video updates from my channel. So let's begin by understanding the Highlander from the front. So you get this redesigned grille out here which actually looks pretty good but it's pretty broad also and then you get the blue badging which is for the hybrids or the electric cars and also a chrome surround around this grille and you get uh, LED headlight cluster along with the DRLs and at the bottom you get LED fog lamps and this piece of trim which is in plastic and then another plastic trim at the bottom so it's just the normal plastic but it's actually good because you don't damage your bumper or you know when you scrape it it's just easier to you know replace that but the bonnet has so many soft curves and this is one of it and the bonnet has these like creases on the top and it actually looks pretty muscular that way now on the sides you get 20 inch redesigned alloy rim there are two versions vxr and the gxr on the gxr you get the 18 inch and on this vxr you get the 20 inch alloy rims and then just notice how long this bonnet is and in fact how long the car is because and also it's got a sloping roof line but I'll come to that also there is a hybrid badging and then you get power foldable power adjustable blind spot warning system and also a 360 degree camera system mounted in these side mirrors and then you get smart keyless entry system and also a chrome half chrome surround uh, at the bottom side of these windows and then again a long doors but as I mentioned, there are so many soft curves uh, like this, like, you know, this one, which is pretty much looks inspired from a Supra. I don't know, like at the back, if you see, you have the roof rails on the top, which are the silver color and a sloping roof line, as I mentioned before. And then these tail lights have these designs on the side for aerodynamic effect. And also even in the front near the side mirrors, they have this sort of bulge. This is all for the aerodynamic uh, design so that there is no washing around the windows. Now in the back, you get these long LED tail light cluster and the side uh, turning signals are halogen bulbs. And then you get the Highlander badging and again a blue Toyota badging out here at the bottom you would find this glossy piece of bumper actually looks pretty good instead of the you know the the normal plastic that they put so and then you have the four parking sensors out here and there is a spare wheel which is mounted at the bottom and a single exhaust on the other side of it but at the back it looks very much similar to a Toyota Fortuner and then there is this also a long spoiler again that also has you know a curve on it like these lines and they all help to make the car you know more aerodynamic and efficient now in terms of the boot space there is quite a bit in this Highlander also so in this current setting where the third row of seat are up you get 453 liters of boot space in this setting and also there is another small storage at the bottom but there are like tools and also a dedicated area for the boot separator which is so nice you know it just doesn't come in the way and then there are more uh, hooks out here for you know tying your shopping bags but in order to put that uh, boot separator you have to fold down the third row of seat which you can do from here let me show you all which is pretty easy actually it's always the case with the Toyota so in this setting you get 1370 liters of boot space and you already see like you know it's a flat area there are also scruff plates out here and the there is no lip at all it's literally a flat area and also the the loading area is pretty low so you know it's easier to just put uh, get your bags and put it in now when you fold down the third row of seat you get almost 2000 and there's a bit of a procedure so let me show you all that so when you do that and then you fold it down like this and I'll go to the other side and do it wow that was a little loud so when I fold this seat also which is yeah so in this current setting you get 
almost 2350 liters of boot space and it is very very flat like super flat like you know i can just go down behind and just rest out here and enjoy the view from here and also the boot opening is pretty big you know so and it's also even like you know so putting your uh, luggage in and out is also going to be very easy well time and again i have mentioned the fact that you know the toyotas are so practical robust and easy to use and uh, the same case is just visible out here in the newer generation of highlander so you get a uh, soft squidgy plastic on the dashboard there's just this normal plastic here in between that they've given and then again the soft plastic and then soft plastic out here also on the door cards and then these door cards are so nicely made like you know in the shape of your hand so that when you rest it it's just easier to you know operate the the various windows and you know controls given out here but the color selection is a bit you know odd for me because it's like a bluish gray color car and then there are these brown interiors and there are beige uh, seats and you know some beige trims out here but otherwise i mean instead of the brown i mean black would have looked rather nicer or some other color i don't know but I don't know if, if it's just me let me know in the comment section which color would you like to add in this uh, you know door trims or the brown color that you see everywhere on the dashboard now coming to the multi information display you get a seven inch very clean very crisp and clear display which you can you know customize to see and very easy to use options also like you know and then you have the standard you know the charging and the eco meter on one side and then the speedometer on the right side but otherwise you can just see everything out here you know the information is very easy to be seen on the display so you get to see your digital speed your eco score your also fuel economy and also driving support like a compass and then there is also audio there is also safety status you can also see the energy monitor there is ev tire pressure there is also finer settings if you want to change the heads up display or the parking sensors or you know the park assist all of that can be changed from here and then if you don't want to see any message you can have the blank screen during the daylight there is a lot of glare that you can uh, you know see and then there is it just becomes a little difficult to see the screen during a bright daylight now coming to the steering wheel the steering wheel is leather covered big and like a very grippy one you know and also this uh, steering wheel is tilt and telescopic which is manually adjustable and on your right side you get uh, adaptive cruise controls and also the infotainment controls and on the left side again you get more infotainment controls and on the top you would get the controls to change all the different settings on your multi information display the AC controls are standard you know buttons and big buttons with bold markings on it and that is so fantastic about Toyota because they don't just put everything into a touch screen or anything they just put it down on the because there is available space and it's just easier and you know when families are going to use these cars your memory so then for them it's just easy to you know see the options out here during the journey and then operate that so this is a the tri zone climate control system so dual for the front passenger and one more zone for the rear uh, second and third row of seat and it's actually very easy to use there are dials for both the air uh, the temperature settings and also there's a rear button AC control button which you can press and then you can also adjust the rear climate from here and also there are ventilated seat options and also heated seat option buttons given out here so this car has both the options another bit which i forgot to mention was this bit of trim which is like a plastic trim which is meant to look like wood now this has been put out everywhere in the car on the door cards even out here in the center console where they've put out here and it's it's actually all right like the quality of it is rather nicer and i wouldn't mind you know seeing this inside my interior this infotainment screen is an 8 inch tft touch screen and to be honest it's exactly the the systems that you would find on the rav4 or you know in the other toyota so the this system is again very easy to use there are menu options on both the sides so there's a home button menu button audio map and there is also a channel track phone apps and also a scroller button and also a volume button so it's rather easy to use system and then there are straightforward uh, three screens on your main home screen you get the navigation you get your audio and the 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 energy system which will be shown on the screen then you go to the menu you get destination audio phone apps info setup and then you know you come to the audio so in terms of the connectivity you get bluetooth you get uh, dab you also get 
Android Auto, you get Apple CarPlay and also you can plug in your USB from the different ports that have been given out here. So in terms of that, there are lots of ways that you can connect to this infotainment system. There's also a Miracast app, which is the Toyota's own app. So you can download the app and then you can cast your phone screen onto the infotainment screen. Coming to the other bits, so there is also a built-in map system. So in the VXR version, you get the map system, but in the GXR, you don't get the navigation system, which is an optional extra. So uh, after that you can go to the finer settings in order to change the different settings on the car it's also got a heads up display which is pretty bright and clear during the day and, and also shows quite a bit of information like the compass the distance when you're in the adaptive cruise and also which uh, drive mode you are in and also the speed now in terms of the visibility from the rear uh, view mirror it's pretty small actually it's pretty much like this can you see my eyes yeah it's pretty much like that from here and there are like these uh, headrests in the second and third row of seat that hinder the visibility even more. So, you know, you literally get just like a lane of visibility from your rear view mirror. And you also get a big panoramic sunroof in this one. And it opens all the way till the back. In terms of the storage space, again, you can put quite a lot of stuff inside the Toyota. So in the door cuts, you can put one and a half liters of bottle. There are two cup holders, which are adjustable cup holders out here. There is also one more storage under the dashboard. And also there are like a couple of compartments under the, the main air conditioning controls. This is one uh, sort of a shelf out here where you can put your phones while charging. There's another one at the bottom in which you can put more phones. So two phones can be, and also there is this opening that you can, you know, remove cover and then you can pass your wire through from the bottom onto the top so everything has been well thought of you know so there is no you know if more people want to charge their phones they can just keep it anywhere and then get them charged so there's also more storage for the passenger out here and then there is also a center uh, uh storage where which is like a slidable storage and that is so nice like i i like this idea of you know the center storage so it's not like opening up so while you know driving you don't have to open it up so instead you just slide it and then there's also a tray in the inside and it's so huge let me demonstrate you like literally my entire hand goes inside it goes till the bottom so it's that huge you can easily store like two three one liter bottles inside it it's that huge and which is what you need again for a family suv there's also a glove box which is again big and also it opens very lightly and not just drops down you get these beige color leather seats and they are big broad they are side bolsters again and they are super comfortable and they are broad also there is enough of uh, support under my thigh and these seats are eight way electronically adjustable driver seat and two way lumbar support that can be adjusted and the passenger seat is eight way electronically adjustable and also these are ventilated seats and also they are heated and cooled both at the same time now in terms of the usb or the charging you get three usb plugs in the front one 120 watt 12 watt power socket out here again and then there is one more 12 volt 120 watt power socket inside this center armrest and there are also two more usb ports in the back and then there are two more usb ports for the additional accessory which is the these two screens which i'm going to be coming to that so you get like seven usb ports seven usb ports in a car so this car is not just big is also big in terms of its offering in the back you get the beige color leather seats but these are both ventilated seats even for the rear passenger yes that's a pretty cool thing and there's not a lot of hump in the center in fact it's very flat and there's also no transmission tunnel or anything that goes out here because the it's an all-wheel drive but it's being the, powered by the electric motors and since this is a hybrid the battery pack is underneath the seat but there's nothing like you you won't be able to recognize so when i sit in the middle it's a very very decent place to sit and also it's pretty broad and i can you know uh, there is no hump in the back also and three people can easily sit in the on on these seats and these are also slidable seats so you can give more room to the rear passenger or when there is no one you can have more leg space you can also slide your feet under the the seat and then there is ample of space to relax your legs during the longer journeys again you get uh, the normal brown color plastic uh, door cards along with this uh, wood like trim which you get and some beige color leather on the side and then this is the screen that i was talking about these are two 
Additional screens that you can put, these are optional extra, so these are 9 inch screen and also they come with the wireless headset for both the screens so that you know during longer journeys you can have a bit of entertainment during the longer journeys and they have a lot of uh, connectivity options like your HDMI, the USB, both the screens have 1.1 one, one USB which is why I was saying it's got 2 additional which are these 2 USB so if you opt for that you get 7 otherwise you get the 5 USB options. So uh, the 2 USB plugs which are given out here in the center are really at the bottom actually like you know they are quite literally on the floor and then you get the air conditioning controls for the rear uh, second row and third row of seat from here and also the ventilated seat options in the back so you can control the entire uh, air conditioning system from here and also you can control it from the front also so driver can also control the pa the air conditioning system and also you get two cup holders out here in the center armrest but this armrest is actually in like sloping down you know and then it's a little on the lower side but it's all right and these are not adjustable so you know smaller size cups may be dangling inside and then you can put again like one liter to one and a half liter worth of bottle in the rear door cards in the back things are slightly congested but you get again the beige color leather seats and there are two cup holders on both the sides but the sitting position a little bit uncomfortable because I am sitting right in the back now there are no very intruding arches inside in the back so even like the second row seats are slidable so you can slide them and get a little bit of more room but it's almost like squatting right now you know in which position I am sitting and uh, two people can sit easily but it's going to be a bit of a struggle if they are like fully grown adults so the Toyota Highlander hybrid comes with a 2.5 liter four cylinder DOHC petrol engine the and also two motors one big motor which is for the rear wheels so the rear wheels are completely driven by the uh, electric motor and this is how it's got an all-wheel drive system now this combined system uh, the hybrid system produces 240 uh, bhp and the combined torque from this system is 237 newton meters of torque now it may not actually sound uh, too much for you know a car this big it's actually surprisingly a very very responsive system and there is an ECVT which is mated to the whole system now the ECVT makes the the transmission pretty efficient that way but the engine and the hybrid setup is pretty good actually considering that this car is actually pretty heavy like you know it's all the the measurements are in tons like with an s so it's it's got like the, almost three it weighs near three tons so the exact uh, weight is 2950 kilograms and it's got an ecvt but somehow it still manages to return a decent amount of fuel efficiency which is anywhere between 14 to 15 liters while the claimed is 19 but I'll take the 14 to 15 as a very good figure for a 3 ton SUV although it's just a little more loud because the engine gets very stressed out and also the CVT just you know makes that growling noise but the response is pretty good I mean I like this and to be honest this is like a family car so it's pretty decent for you know the setup is pretty decent for a family SUV and and it's got the response and if you are you know wanting to impress your family there is also a sport mode but this whole setup out here to change the sport and the eco mode is all made out of plastic and that looks sort of really cheap you know and instead like you know something here that could have been added you know this whole trim of wood like material that they've put so that would have looked nicer but when you put it in the sport mode things become a little more sporty it's still a very decent and responsive system if you just minus the sound of the engine which is just slightly but overall in terms of the NVH levels also the car is doing pretty well like again because this is like a family SUV so it has to be comfortable and it has to be quiet and this car does both of the jobs quite well it's actually pretty quiet now when it comes to the suspension and the steering this is where uh, it's a little you know I have a bit of a complaint now now you see this has a softer setup in terms of the suspension as a result you will get a bit of a roll in this one and there is actually quite it's got a softer setting like the moment you turn it's it's got a roll which is quite high enough and also the steering is an electronic steering but 
That electronic steering is so light. I mean, literally, I can't feel a thing from the road. There is zero feedback. And it's not just that. So usually when the electronic steering, when you go at a higher speed, you know, the steering becomes a little stiffer. Not in this. It's, it's, it's just got a very same sort of linear nature, you know, at all speed range. And the moment you just press, even just put your finger onto the steering wheel, look at this. I can just change it like a three ton suv i can change the direction with my finger so it's that light and that soft although it's also a little sluggish while changing directions but again this is like an everyday suv so you're not expecting like a sporty sort of you know performance out of it and i get that but yeah i wish there was more feedback from the steering and it was a, it, it had a little weight to it now when it comes to the safety system the highlander is loaded with quite a lot so you get seven airbags two in the front for the driver and the passenger there is two side airbags again for the driver and the passenger four curtain airbags but like two curtain airbags on the sides in the side pillar and there is also a driver knee airbag so that way it makes seven airbags there is also a 360 degree camera system but again the tft screen makes it look a little you know blurry and there are darker patches there are there's too much contrast and also especially during night it gets very dark there is also child isofix points in both the rear seat there is also uh, abs there is also ebd there is also the warning systems in the front the uh, rear uh, the front and the rear collision warning system there is also traction control system on this car and then there is also an eco mode so you can put it in the eco mode and you can get more efficiency out of it i mean maybe you can reach closer to uh, you know 19 kilometers per liter there's also tire pressure monitoring system and also there is also a tire pressure monitoring system for the spare wheel also so you get for all the five wheels and that is pretty cool now the way this all-wheel drive system works is traditionally it's just a two-wheel drive system and then whenever there is a need for traction in the rear wheels the rear motor would kicking and and give you more uh, traction the brakes are a little spongy like the pedal is a little soft like there is quite a bit of travel now in terms of the pricing the toyota highlander uh, hybrid VXR this particular version costs 179,900 dirhams and the GXR version which is a lower version than this one costs 153,900 dirhams now in terms of the asking price I feel it's pretty good because for that you get the performance you get the styling you get the comfort you get a panoramic sunroof and then you get so much of advanced tech the safety system and everything when you are considering buying a family SUV so that way it's pretty loaded and it's also got the Toyota's bulletproof reliability so you have to worry nothing about that now also the hybrid system is one of the clever systems that you would find in the market Toyota is always ahead of the game when it comes to the hybrid system and in terms of the competition also it is in competition with the Hyundai Palisade there is uh, Volvo XC90 there is Ford Explorer Honda Pilot there is Mazda CX-9 so in all of these this is actually one of the best selling cars in the US market and also in many other regions also so there's no question about how good this car is anyways that is pretty much it for this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it and if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here i shall see you in the next video bye bye and take care